Okay, so we saw some selling pressure again. That's two days in a row. The way we want to look at this now is <clears throat> we have this 264. I guess right now the lows in the pre market are kind of where we consolidated back on 29th around 262.60. So, so let's say 262 and a quarter to 260.260. Potentially find some support here. And if we balance, um, we look for a balance back up to um, 263 and a half. 264, this band right here. But it, it is interesting that, you know, we have topped out at 266. The next day we had the shenanigans, big bounce, the gap up the next morning on the, uh, the tax deal being done, and that news was sold. The next morning we came in, we were up a little bit in the morning, we popped up um, to quite to the high from two days before, above 265, but we hit that, and then it was right at 1130, 12 o'clock, and the market was sold the rest of the day. Um, so seller, seller's trying to take control here a little bit. Interesting to see if we could get a pop back up to here and then fail again and actually get a close down here. That would, that would kind of wake some people up, I think. Um, IWM is almost back down to um, the 150.50, which had been resistance for a couple months way back when. We really had this time period here when we, back in October, and we couldn't get through. We tried one last time, November 1, got hammered, and that was the beginning of the down leg in, uh, in IWM that took us down to the mid-140s. Um, we were waiting for that flush through 145. We bought on it, and we had a good reversal off that area. So you know, the one thing, just looking at this over the last few months, is there aren't, there aren't trades every day in these indices, but when they once they show a lot of... Uh, weakness and set up. There's some good breakdown trades like this one right here below the um, 147 and a half or so. Um, and and then we finally got our flush through 145 and within days we were right back up at 148. So those were the good ones. Um, I did buy in the stay here. Remember I bought pretty early. I was buying it one in front of 150. We, we flushed all the way down to below 149 before the big reversal. Um, and now we're coming back down into this 150.50 again. So you know, to me, if we can come into 150.50 and support that and get back up on 151, you can see a move right back into 152. Um, really loosening up a bit on IWM. And then on accused, we have seen a lot of action in the, the you know, large tech sold pretty hard. Um, you can see that, you know, I was in a few of the names yesterday. They bounced hard right on the op off the opening lows um, you can see the Q's kind of spiked down right on the open, didn't take out its pre-market low, but spiked down close to 152 and then ripped um, about two and a half dollars before we're being sold pretty good. So just looking at this over the last four days, it's pretty wild price action. Um, looks like some people wanted to get out. I mean, these names have had incredible runs in the videos, Facebooks, um, MU, which is, I think that got some downgrades recently. Um, they've all had incredible runs the last six months to the year. And, you know, they're absorbing pressure of some funds probably liquidating large positions. The question is, um, once those liquidations are done, can it gain its footing and start to move back above some of these recent prices? So we tested this 152 again. So this was the all-time high. Came back down, went through it, got back above, tested it, made a new all-time high, tested it, tested it, made a new all-time high, held higher. Um, so 152 is big. Couldn't quite get to it this day here, but we got to it um, pre-market yesterday, almost on the open yesterday. Now we're right down here. 
it's being pressured. Below that, then you have 151. So it could just be a large consolidation and for some wild moves. Um, I'd probably look at the 152 level, but also the individual names that were involved in yesterday, like the Babas and the, and the Facebooks. Um, I didn't touch NVIDIA, but obviously that's a leader in the sector as well. So we got a, name, a lot of names to go through, so I'm going to move through them quickly. Um, TROX, um, they, uh, different division of the government, but same thing as Time Warner, AT&T, antitrust action from the government saying, we don't like this deal, the merger deal you have. Um, the one analyst I saw came out said they probably have to make some concessions, eliminating a division, which would put it here in terms of value at around 23. Um, if they have to completely break up the merger, um, they put the pricing here. So you can see it's kind of in the middle of that area. Um, the way I look at it is it's at 20 right now. If you can get a flush through 20 back down into the this, this consolidation here from from August, I would have believed there'd be some buyers stepping in here. The risk reward at that point, you know, no deal comes down to here, but if the deal gets done um, with some concessions, which is usually that's the pattern for the government, um, some digest divestures, your risk reward is good enough. Um, so we'll zoom in a little quickly and then we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah. So if you get a quick pop on the open, I would think that it's shortable, um, 21 area or higher. Um, Home Depot. So Home Depot, just another stock that had a monster run. They guided in line, so that's why it's coming down. Um, they did say 15 billion buyback. If somebody could check the market cap, see what percentage of the market cap that is, the 15 billion, that would be helpful. Put it in the chat. Um, I'll give you a little bit more feedback. But right now the market's saying kind of so what? So we've made a run here from 168 to 186. Okay, so it's above the five, you know, 5% is kind of the minimum for a buyback to have a positive impact in my, kind of those are the Spencer rules. 10% uh, is significant. If it's over 10% and was down like this, you'd be buying very aggressively. 5%, it's, it has an impact, but it's uh, not that big of a deal. Um, so what we're looking right, right now is just kind of this area here, where it's tested a few days ago. Um, could it flush below 177? Absolutely. Um, but this is kind of the first spot where maybe you'd see some buyers step in. And again, remember, it was just down here below. These are all new buyers here. Um, if it starts dropping on the open, you know, these people who bought the last couple of days, they're already nervous. Um, the fact that they just guided in line is not great. So my inclination would be to play it on the short side, but understanding it could, you could get a bounce in this area right here, maybe even all the way right back up to this. 180 to 180.70. Um, but unless I saw it really bounce hard here, stay up in the 180 and then break to the upside, I wouldn't be really too keen on it and filling the gap. Um, so more likely that it closes 178 or lower and closes above 180 in my view. But we'll see. The market will decide <clears throat> in the next few hours. DVA. Um, they sold a large part of their company. Um, they're going to focus on their, their kidney business. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Their dialysis business. Um, so it was in a downtrend coming into this news. It's a, it's a one-time catalyst. It does free up a lot of cash for their other business, frees up cash to buy back stock. Um, and it's a beaten down name. So it's gapping well above 64 right now um, into actually 68. This 67, 68 is a little bit of an interesting area. And above that, the most recent high was 70.
Okay, so it topped out above 68 um, originally here earlier this morning. Uh, came off a lot. Well, came off about three, four dollars. Now it's 68. Looks like a good level that I picked there. Uh, it's failing. Other people are obviously watching it. That's why I just stopped here. Um, doesn't mean necessarily it's going to roll back over again and go right back down to 64, 65. Um, let's use this 68 on the open as inflection. Um, and if it starts to hold above, just be careful. It could, it could rip right to 70. Um, and then what did I for support here? Uh, 64. So it almost got to 64 on this pullback. So maybe on the open, it, it flushes to here. You catch a move back up to like here and, and see. Um, it's already done 700,000 shares, which is 35% of its daily volume. So I mean, people are, are paying up for this. Uh, it's pretty solid news. Um, the next one is edit. Um, spot secondary. Um, I didn't buy any yet. I was kind of hoping this, the secondary was right here. I was hoping that it would flush down maybe to 25.50. And then we've had, I mean, I don't remember the last time we lost on one of these trades on the, these guys doing a secondary and it flushes below the secondary price and then bounces above the secondary price. So they announced the secondary, but said it run up recently. And they have to price it right here. So if we can get a flush anywhere to 25.50 or lower and play it for a move back up to 26, 26 and a quarter, maybe even hold some. I think last time we did this, I held a little bit and it just kept on going like a few more dollars. Um, CLNT. So CLNT did some sort of swap offer. I don't, you know. It seemed like maybe it helped capitalize them. I don't know if it's probably, I imagine everyone on the desk is going to fade it. Um, yeah. It was $12 um, a couple weeks ago when it ran up. Um, yeah, I honestly, like when I looked at it, I just put the news in there for you. I don't have a strong opinion whether or not it's legitimately good news and will lead to it going to higher prices. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go off the levels from, from last time it failed. We looked at it, it failed at 12, it went all the way down to like 8.5. It made a lower high above 10, then it made a lower high 9.5. Um, for me to change my view on it, I think it would have to, like after 10 o'clock, it was consolidating above $10 and then broke above 11. That would be interesting to me. Then, then, then maybe it even, you know, maybe it makes one of those runs to the, the high, recent high, and even takes that out. But right now, I'm looking at, you know, shorting a pop on the open to 10, to above 10, and then a failure. I'm looking for it to, to trend back down. Um, if I don't get that, just after the open and consolidation below nine, I'll look for that to break to the downside as well. Um, TOL. Toll Brothers, oh, yesterday, right. So this was interesting. So I made decent money on this. I bought this on the open, um, or in the pre-market at 46, and then on the open, I got 45. I don't Actually, you know what? This one flushed down on the open. I didn't get it down here. You probably heard me complaining. Um, and then it quickly ripped up to 47, sold a bunch, came back down. It held 46 for a while, and people did a nice job in chat saying the sellers were stepping down, it was getting tighter, it could break, but the buyers never dropped there, and it broke to the upside and bounced $2, and I think I had a script sell it like when I, on this final green bar here. Um, wasn't on the desk when it got up to 48, or I would have tried it on the short side here for a little bit for a move back down to 47. Um, so it was a good trader. It didn't really, you know, after the initial bounce off 46, um, did come in uh, quite a bit, 46.70, held there a few times. Um, so the buyers did step up to higher prices. Um, I still do think it has bounce potential to work its way back up to $50. So um, that's the way I'm looking at it now. Um, HMNY, this one competitor came in. We had, I think, what was it 9.30 on the sheet, yesterday's sheet for some support. That was the low yesterday, you can see if you are watching it and you notice it comes down to our support level and it moves sideways there, that's you should always buy against that level. Um, you're only looking at, you know, you're only looking at nine, ten cents of risk at most, um, and it did, it did pop off that level about 40, 50 cents pretty quickly. Then the buyers stepped up a little bit higher, it looks like. So, let's see where it is this morning. It's a little bit higher. So, um, you should have the alert down at 9:45, 9:30, and 9:40. There was some buying yesterday. Maybe it holds that again, and you can catch a move back up to ten, ten and a half dollars. Um, EIX, EIX. I was lucky enough to somehow make some money on the long side buying 
um, you know, 71 and change down to 70. It bounced to 72 and a half. I got flat. I stopped watching it. It wouldn't have been wrong after it had this big bounce here. And you saw it consolidate, started to break down again, short it, reshorting it. Um, just just trade it against 70. It went down to 70 and bounced again. It looks like there was some news here. Um, and now it's gapping down this morning. So um, it's going to be in play the next few days, just like I don't remember the, the ticker for that other utility from a few months ago that was kind of crazy. Um, but this is worth keeping an eye on. Um, at some point, it will bottom and probably have you know, 10, 20% bounce off the lows. And uh, it's definitely worth watching and trading it off the technical levels. Um, and then finally, MU. MU was one where you know I really wanted to get long this one, and I just couldn't get enough. Um, I don't actually remember the prices I got of it. I definitely got it below $40. I think I had my really large bids in against the low from the prior day. And it just, it got down to 39.50. And I think it got right down to like where I had a pretty big bid and I didn't get executed there and I had to chase it a little bit. Um, and you know, I had a big bounce. Uh, I got back up to where it broke down from the prior day um, and failed there. So you know, looking at this morning, I'm just looking for a higher low, 40, 30 to kind of 40, 65 in this area right here. Um, Eventually, if you get a close above 42.50, you're looking at a move back up to this 44 here. So you can kind of see the bottoming process crushed, uh, holding here, but failing to close above 42, 42 and a half. Um, it would be pretty bearish in my view if it, it closed below $40 today. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens what stocks are in play, what levels in those stocks are important, and how we might go about attacking that stock. That's Steve Spencer, 20-year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.